for the audio levels, can you please say your name and sure, event? Yeah, uh, Daniel Mahalski, Men's Steeplechase. Can you push it just a little bit yeah, closer sure. to your mouth? Is that good? Thank you. Yeah, right. that's better. Okay, so why don't we start off with, uh, you know, can you can you tell us what happened through through your steeplechase? Uh, uh, Don Cabral pretty much took it out to the pace, which I'm great with because he's a really uh, sound hurdler. So as as he sets the pace, it doesn't um, undulate so much on the hurdle, so it just kind of stays steady, which I um, kind of try to do too. And so tucking in kind of behind him uh, in third-ish, fourth, fifth-ish place throughout was um, pretty relaxed for me. I was kind of seeing the pace. I knew it wasn't very quick and I was feeling pretty relaxed, but I knew that it would leave a lot of guys in the play. And that, you know, over the last four or three or especially two laps that it would really accelerate. And um, it was a little later on and a little more abrupt when it did go. I know Bernard Keeter was trying to push it from the outside and he kind of tucked back in. Uh, it definitely, it definitely went at 800 to go. And I was not um, super sensitive to that move. I didn't like perfectly cover it. I was kind of lagging. And when you're in, you know, fourth or fifth place, whatever I was at that time, um, it kind of lets it string out. And um, I figured, okay, don't freak out. Uh, reeling back in a little bit on the hurdling. You know, if they're gonna leave me, you know, the inside of lane one, so I can just do clean, clean hurdling throughout the last, you know, 600 or so, then great. Um, I feel like my water bearers were really strong and I was gaining a step most of the time and kind of didn't have a whole lot of room because mostly I was on the inside. So may maybe I didn't get to get that step that I normally would because I had guys right in front of me, especially Hillary Bohr, it's just kind of a smaller guy who doesn't quite have as big of a water jump. And a few times when I was following him, I didn't really get to take advantage of that pop out of the water. But uh, yeah, it hurt a lot. It's hot out here. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm proud of the effort and I know I beat a lot of really great runners today. Um, and, you know, I, I don't really, well, I don't really go into this thing like trying to beat people. Like I don't have enemies in this thing. Like I really like the guys that we, we compete with. And so, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to beat guys and stuff. And it's a little, it's not quite as hard when you make an Olympic team. <laughs> um, so I was really close and I'm really grateful to, to have gotten to this point to, to have the support of my family, friends, coaches, uh, coworkers. Um, and it's just a, the gracious gifts that God has given me to, to allow all this to happen. I mean, it's, it's, it's a really crazy thing that we can even do sport like this um, at all, um, especially the year that we've had. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're a blessed people here in America. So I, I, I uh, you know, though I would have been really, really proud to represent us internationally at the Olympics, um, I'm... Uh, hungry and committed to following through with this thing. I'm going to keep doing it uh, as long as, um, you know, there's still upside, and w which I think I have a ton of still. I've been doing this a lot less than, than most of the field. Just started senior year of high school. Uh, and, uh, you know, the sky's the limit. And talking about your supporters going back to that, uh, the, who were the people saying hi to you over oh, here uh, cheering you on? My wife and my baby and uh, some of my college teammates. And uh, yeah, I don't see any of my blood relatives up there right this second besides my wife and baby. But yeah, uh, I got a lot of, um, my, you know, my parents and my brother are here and a lot of other friends that are from the West or Pacific Northwest that drove down to make the trip, especially once they found I made the, the final. Uh, so, you know, it's been awesome being here out in Eugene, uh, and this is my first ever time in the Pacific Northwest at all. And, uh, you know, I love this place. It, it's just come alive to me. You know, Eugeniacs live up to the reputation. Track town, it truly is track town. The people love it. And it's a great atmosphere. Um, so, you know, I, I told, you know, the, the folks that I was staying with, I said, oh man, I'm gonna have a hard time leaving. I love it so much here. 
Um, so they they really were an awesome uh, uh, host host to me and my wife and baby. And uh, like you mentioned, given the year that we've had, and we are we are lucky to be having this competition. What does it mean to you to to have your wife and, and child here with you to support you and cheer yeah, you? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, you know, this is like one of the few times that they've since my baby was born in January. You know, the few times she where they've been able to come along on a meet. And, uh, you know, she hadn't been sleeping the best lately. So, you know, it was a bit of a challenge when we first got here because she was kind of out of sync with her with her eating and sleeping schedule. And, um, you know, I was waking up at 4 a.m. screaming her head off. But uh, praise the Lord, she, you know, kind of settled into the rhythm, got eight hours of sleep the past few nights. And so did I because of it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's awesome. I, my wife is really supportive and really believes in what I'm doing and um, is a, is an incredible, you know, she's a coach to me too. You know, she, she knows me deeply and she's been a student of the sport since we started our relationship. And uh, so she really can be a great sounding board for me and to, to process races, training, whatever, you know, like uh, I know Nick Willis has, you know, that his wife Sierra has been by his side for so long that she, she has a wealth of knowledge and, um, I was gleaned so much of that from her coach and my wife strives to be that way too, you know? Um, so she's, she's great. Her name is Abby and, uh, yeah, I'm so, I'm so blessed to have her. And next, next question is from Weldon Johnson. Can you talk us through the final 200? Um, I thought maybe I could sneak up on some guys and the way this track is situated, the, uh, the water pit and the last hurdle, all the hurdles are just rotated back a little bit, which allows for more time coming off the last water jump and coming off the last hurdle to sprint. And that was something I was taking note of to prepare for. And that's one of the things my coach highlighted and I was thinking about already too. Um, and so, you know, I was sitting in fifth, I think. And, uh, you know, I really thought with my strong water barriers, that I might be able to sneak up on some guys. And, you know, it's hard to, when you're sitting in fifth position, it's a little harder to think, okay, I've got, I can make this team, you know? It's harder to think that because you've got two people to pass. No, it wasn't exactly strung out. You know, guys were pretty close. And, uh, you know, coming off the water, I didn't exactly, you know, just perfectly nail it. Like I was straining pretty hard. Um, and then definitely after the last hurdle, I, didn't have um, what it takes to, you know, out sprint Mason Furlick for that third spot. And, you know, I, I as much as I wanted to make that team, you know, I'm happy to see Mason Furlick get it. You, he and I roomed together out at the Mount Sac meet this year. And I, I really gained a friend on that trip. And, you know, we roomed in 413 and I got second in the Olympic standard and he got first in the 5k with a trial standard and we were like man we're 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 a good team we should room together more often and so, so you know like i said before you know there's not there's no real enemies in this thing like we root for each other i, I like to think at least you know, as much as we want to see yourself there um it's easy to to root for the guys from our country in this event especially and then a follow-up from uh, Weldon Johnson. Uh, how old is your baby? Uh, Daily Joy is um, five and a half months old. She was born January 3rd. And she uh, she's mostly living up to the name. Like I said, you know, sleeping has been a little tough for us a few weeks. But uh, yeah, she's, you know, I, di I didn't really get the sense of pride that parents can have in their kids until I had one. You know, I thought people were just absolutely off their rockers when they had when they, you know, are willing to do anything for their kids or they're just insanely obsessed and in love with their kid. And, and I, I had gotten a taste of that even since the day she was born. I like had an overwhelming feeling of that sense of pride and it just out on my run and I kind of like teared up for a second. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I hope that she's a track star. Maybe, maybe if she is, she'll, if she's a sprinter, she'll probably go by like Day J or something like that. I don't know what she'll do. She might be a great swimmer. Her mom's got a good swimming frame, even though she never did it. She can dust me. I eat her splash. <laughs> uh, 
All right, a reminder to the media to please direct your questions to the public chat. If you're currently writing a question, please use the raise hand feature so I know to wait. Okay, and I'm not seeing any more questions. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, thank you.